Hi, I'm Emily Williams, the founder of the top success and personal development company for driven women called I Heart My Life. I grew my company from $442 to seven figures in my first 18 months. And since then, it's become a movement for women who know they're meant for something big and refuse to settle. At I Heart My Life, we operate with the belief that anything is possible and no dream is too big. We're all about combining business strategy, deep mindset work, high performance practices, money tips, and a whole lot of lifestyle to help you get the results you deserve in all areas of life. Because after all, we only get this one shot. This is your one-stop shop for all things inspiration. So grab your favorite drink and a pen and a notebook and get ready to be inspired. Oh, and if you're not a member of our community, go to iheartmylife.com slash join and receive all of our emails and announcements. And while you're at it, copy and paste this episode link and share it with three friends. Now on to the episode. Hey, it's Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your host of the I Heart My Life show. This is episode 210, how to move past your fear of judgment, a real life coaching session with Jenny Parker. So today we are doing a deep dive into what comes up for all of us as we move forward with a vision and a dream. When we start to put ourselves out there, there's a lot of fear and insecurity that can come up, especially around what people are going to think. Now, normally this has to do with friends and family, but sometimes it's basically a blanketed statement around just being nervous about what people think. Now, this is exactly what's happening for Jenny as she moves forward with her own coaching business. There are some doubts, some fears, some hesitation that's coming up from her for her, and it's stopping her from moving forward with her big picture vision. Now, what I want for everyone I work with, including you, is that you can move forward full speed ahead so that you can have massive impact. So today we're going to move through all of those blocks and support you in going forward with your goals. Today, we also talked to Jenny a bit more about high performance as well and things that she can do to keep herself moving forward and hitting those next level results that she's craving, as well as maintain a level of a consistency instead of starting and stopping. So I know this is going to be a really relatable episode. So go ahead, grab a pen and paper, pretend like you're my client sitting right there as Jenny was, and be prepared to experience lots of results and major shifts. Let's do it. This episode was sponsored by the I Heart My Life Mastermind. The I Heart My Life Mastermind is perfect for you if you already have a business and you're looking to scale. We cover tons of different topics. We cover marketing strategy, revenue planning, team, processes, everything you need in terms of mindset, high performance, really taking care of yourself as well as your business, events, publicity. We literally have seven coaches under one umbrella to support you and give you the answers to all of your burning questions. We host regular weekly workshops where you get your personal questions answered. We have retreats. You have a private Slack channel where you get to ask questions 24 seven. You have an extensive resource bank that helps you put in place our cash method in your own business and much, much more. This is one of the most inventive programs around. I don't know anyone else offering the service that we provide. So if you are interested in growing your business and transforming your life, definitely book a call with us to learn more. Go to iheartmylifebooking.com and learn more about the I Heart My Life Mastermind. Welcome to the I Heart My Life show, Jenny. I'm so excited to have this time with you and have this coaching session. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. You just told me this has been on your vision board for two years. I'm so so excited. I'm just a bit nervous about this. Totally understand. (laughs) So I know there's multiple things that you want to cover today. One of the things that I think we should talk about first is this fear around judgment that's coming up for you and basically stopping you from putting yourself out there in the way that you desire to. So can you talk to me a little bit more about that? So... uh I I know what I need to do. I need to step up and I need to become visible in order to promote my business and drive it forward and get my message in front of my ideal client. I understand that. But I, I almost, I procrastinate and I bring myself to a grinding halt by sort of playing out worst case scenarios of other people's judgments of what I'm putting out there. So I end up not taking action because I scare myself by what other people's possible responses will be and how it will make me feel. And then I get annoyed and then it just sort of cycles. So 
Yeah. So can you give me a specific example of when you've wanted to put yourself out there, but then you have a thought of, oh, what will mom say or whoever it is? What is a specific (laughs) example? Um, I guess, I guess Facebook lives. I just fear that I would babble and not say anything relevant and that I would just come across as a blithering idiot. And who are you worried about saying that? Like, who do you think Um, will see you as that? I, well, it's not, it's not my, my legions of followers because I'm not quite there yet. Um, so that's, that's, I, I don't, I honestly can't tell you, I guess it's, is it people I know? I mean, I've, I've sort of talked to people that I know about what I'm doing and I've sent them my website link so they're aware of where I'm at and my, my Facebook page and stuff. But I don't, I probably judgment of people I don't even know. And that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Okay. I hear myself say it. Has somebody said that to you in the past? Um, probably not in seriously, but in jest. Okay. So what is the belief that you hold about yourself in terms of speaking, putting yourself out there? How do you see yourself? Um, How do I see myself? As an enthusiastic amateur who isn't going to particularly make a huge difference to anybody else. And I think maybe that's where it comes from. I don't feel like I have the credibility or the authority. I mean, I've, I've lived what I'm preaching and I've been through it and I've come out the other side. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's lack of credentials. Okay. So what credentials would you need in order to feel legit? Um, I, I, well, I have a degree in what I do for a nine to five. So maybe some sort of more, you know, formalized qualification, but then equally, and I've been through, I've played this out so many times in my head, Emily, I've said to myself, right, well, do you know what? You've actually lived it and you've been through it and you've popped out the other side. If you were in your ideal client's shoes now, would you want to be mentored and coached by somebody who'd walked the walk, talked the talk and popped through the other side? Or would you want to be mentored by somebody who'd got a load of letters after their name, but who hadn't actually been through it? Who's going to be able to better empathize? Who's going to be able to better understand your perspective? Who's going to be able to say, look, I know you're in a really tough place right now, but it is going to get better. It's the person that's done it. Exactly. So you've gotten yourself rationally to the place where you understand that even if someone were to judge you, you still are capable of doing this. It's important to put yourself out there. No one's going to die. So what is it that's actually stopping you? Like envision yourself right after this call, you're going to jump on Mm -hmm. Facebook live. You're going to share an important message. What Mm -hmm. comes up for you? Crap. Can I do this? What am I going to say? How will I deal with it if people come back and say, you, that, that was pointless. That was what a waste of my time. I've just spent five minutes watching this girl and she's wasted my time. Okay, great. Let's look at that. So say below the video, you have somebody who comments and they say, what a waste of time. What comes up for you? I guess my, so my immediate reaction would be, I would be hurt, but that's an ego based reaction. And then I would think, well, okay, so it didn't resonate with them. But what's to say that it didn't resonate with another person who didn't comment? Great. Let me back up a minute. So you said you would be hurt. What about that statement would hurt you? I would I would internalize that and make it mean that I was a waste of time, not what I was doing was a waste of time. Okay, got it. Okay. So what we're looking for here are core beliefs about yourself that are coming up. So you've already talked about not being good enough, being, Mm -hmm. you know, rambler, not having concise (laughs) uh, thoughts and and verbiage, um, a waste of time, right? All of these are thoughts that you have about yourself. And so basically what happens is when we put ourselves out there, the fear is that people are going to see us the way that we see ourselves. Our biggest insecurities are going to be magnetized because other people are going to see, oh, she doesn't have it together. She can't do it. This is a waste of time. 
So your only job right now in order to move through this is to be your biggest cheerleader for yourself right? and okay. to develop. What'd you say? Yep. Yeah, okay. I can do that. And to, de- well, let's look at how you're going to do that and to develop the belief that this is possible for you. So in your most confident moments or days, when you put yourself out there or even in your corporate career, Mm -hmm. when you've achieved something or gone for a job, how did you motivate yourself and remind yourself what you're capable of? I thought to myself, you've got this, you know, your market, you know, your product, you know what you're talking about. And I believed in my gut, in the sort of very belly of my being that what I was delivering was right. And I knew it was right. And it wasn't my job to convince everybody else in the room. It was merely to share that I knew I was right. And they were lucky to have me because I was going to sell them my vision. And they were going to get so excited and wrapped up in the passion and the enthusiasm and the drive. They can't fail, but get on board. They're like, yeah, wow, she's absolutely nailing it. She's so, she's, she's got this down to such a degree that she's getting excited about about it, just talking about it. We can't wait to see it. Let me add it. I love that. When did this happen? What was this moment? Um, it happens when, so I'm a designer by trade and it's when I present a range that I really believe in. I'm like, this okay. is commercial. It's going to, the customer's going to love it. It's going to sell. It's going to make a shed load of money. It's going to serve the customer's needs. And it's, it's, it's bob on. And how do you get yourself to that place where you're that confident? What happens? Um, I, I, so when it, when it's product, I just have a feeling. It's like I work around it and I, I tinker with it and I tweak it. And then it's like, bang, that's it. That's it. I can see it. I can visualize it. I know how it's going to work. I know how it's going to come together. And from that moment, it's almost like, you know, when you watch those movies and there's a, there's like a, in Top Gun, when they do the lit thing and they they do like lock on to shoot someone, it's like I'm locked on. I know I've got a sh- I've got a shooting solution, Emily. That's what I've got. I'm locked on. I've got a shooting solution. Love it. Okay, so how do we apply that to the coaching business? Whether it's you delivering a message on Facebook Live or you putting your offer out there, how can you apply the design stuff to this? Good question. I. Part of me thinks it's about editing. It's almost about a more focused approach, you know, less sort of scattergun and less less wide reaching and really niche it down and keep it super tight and super fine because I don't need, I'm going to use another analogy. It's like selling a house. I don't need to sell that house to hundreds of people I just need it to resonate with one person who's then going to invest in it and buy in it. So if my message, hopefully it'll resonate with more than one person, but if it resonates with specific people and they really feel some sort of connection and like a, like a shooting solution, they click, Mm -hmm. then there is nobody else they want to, they want to talk to. There's nobody else they want to work with. You know, you are their, you are their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how do you envision getting yourself to that place where you're speaking? (laughs) Let's brainstorm that together. Okay, let's brainstorm. So, what would make you feel more specific, also more prepared, more concise when you're jumping on these Facebook lives? I think I have to map them out. I think I think the ability to do this spontaneously is probably something that comes with experience. It's like anything, you know, you watch a toddler learn to walk and they fall over and they make space, but they get back up and they redo it and you sort of apply your learnings. And that's the only response I can think of. Great. No, exactly right. So there's, as you're, you're, you're mastering your craft, it's going to take some trial and error. It's going to take you putting yourself out there. I'd imagine that you didn't always feel so confident as a designer, right? (laughs) No. So how long, let's just look back. How long do you think it took for you to feel confident as a designer? Probably about, I don't know, five years maybe. Right. Until I really got into the like, yeah, bang, bang, bang. 
Exactly. So mastery is not an overnight thing. And so we want to have, have patience with ourselves when we're trying something new as you are and putting yourself out there and it's different as well. So think about it like this, when you have that design, you have that product that you're featuring when you're on Facebook live, you are the product. And so it brings up a whole new can of worms for people. So we have to be really patient and kind to ourselves and recognize that our job is, like I said, to create that confidence, create that belief and do what we can to prepare ourselves and set ourselves up for success. So like you said, maybe it's writing out the bullet points of what you're going to talk about. So you feel confident going into it and you're more concise with what it is that you're going to share. Maybe it's speaking to one specific person who you have in mind, you know, that ideal client, if you, you know, know someone in real life, envision them as you're sharing your message and block out all the other people who are not the ideal client and don't worry about them. Could I speak to myself where I was at that point? Yes. I needed me. So if I can almost like envision where I was, how I was feeling, if I could like sort of be my own I know you and I have talked about this before, but be my own fairy godmother and sort of zoom back in time and almost be like in a film, like a snapshot of this is where you're going. This is what you're going to do. It's going to be absolutely fun. And then that, I guess, is going to give me a tone and a vocabulary which really syncs. And I mean, like meshes as in sync with my ideal client. Love it. Because you are your ideal client. I was. I'm not now. Well, yeah. (laughs) Right. So that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. I love that. So really envisioning yourself, however many yeah. years ago, speaking yeah. to her, when you're writing the emails that you want to send out, you know, ask yourself, is this something I would resonate with years ago? Is this something that would have landed for me? Is this yeah. a program that I would have liked? Yeah. That would be, su- that's, I love that. So I have looked back through a couple of my old journals from that time And that's really helped me get into where I was headspace wise. Yes. So maybe revisit those before I do it as well. Yeah. And just know, you know, you've lived it. And so you have the experience, you have the stories, you have the journey. And so, although I want you to prepare, just also know that life has also prepared you and you have a desire to be this coach and to put this message out there. And so you are capable of it. That desire means you are capable of it. If it wasn't a desire in my heart, it wouldn't be meant for me and I wouldn't be here now, would I? Exactly. So as you can see, this is very much not about other people. It's about you and you being confident within yourself. And, you know, if we do get those comments on the bottom of the Facebook live, like you said, you know that you weren't that person's cup of tea, but there's the other person like you that you're speaking to, and they're the ones who need the message. Yeah. I think it partially comes back down and this sort of sank in while you were just talking a moment about, about how would I judge somebody doing that? So that if I'm making this judgment, then that's where the nervousness comes around that somebody else might make that judgment. Okay. So you're judging other people on Facebook live? In all honesty, I try, (laughs) this is another issue, try not to use Facebook. When I was getting divorced, it really messed with my head, seeing everybody else's like highlight reel and perfect life. Mm -hmm. So I just came off it. Okay. Um, So I don't really watch them in all honesty, but you know, I think it's natural to judge other people on what they're doing and how they're showing up and how they're presenting. Okay. So what if you practiced not judging? that's something I'm working on. It's not going brilliantly. (laughs) Okay. So there's a little practice that one of my coaches taught me. Anytime we express judgment to somebody else, we say to ourselves, I forgive myself for judging. Okay. And it's also a really great tool because you become aware of how often you are judging. Yep. And so we really want to get into a place of acceptance. And what if you started to transform the way that you look at other people's highlight reel or video, and instead of making it feel bad or using that to harm yourself, you use it to inspire yourself. Yeah, I could do. Okay. So what's the resistance? How would I do that? 
Okay. So number one, we want to be aware of the fact that your core wound, and I'll explain what that is in a second, is that you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so your mind is always looking for things that verify this truth that you're not good enough. So it could be, oh, Cindy took a trip to Greece. I can't do that. So I'm not good enough or, you know, whatever (laughs) you you get what I'm trying to say. here. So you get to decide Mm -hmm. as you're scrolling through Facebook, whether you're going to look at people's pictures or videos and allow it to harm you, or if you're going to be inspired. So you literally, I would say spend five minutes a day looking through Facebook and bless or have conversations with those people and say, Oh my gosh, Heidi, thank you for showing me that I want to go to Greece. Thank you for showing me I can go to Greece. Mm -hmm. Emily, thank you so much for showing me it's possible to have a successful Mm -hmm. coaching business or it's possible to have whatever a 50K day or whatever the thing is, right? Instead of allowing it to go to a place of jealousy or harm for to you, expressing out loud, thank you and gratitude towards the things that are showing up. Got it. So it's a gratitude thing. We flip it and we make it into a blessing. It's a blessing that you've been able to do this because if you can do it, I can do it. Exactly. Got it. And do you also see how energetically that by you not judging? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So you raise up. Yeah. So it all, it's all starting with you reminding yourself what you're capable of and that you are good enough, good enough and worthy of all these things. That's really what this is all about. Yeah. And when you do that, then you're going to put yourself out there more. You're going to send the emails. You're going to write the posts. You're going to feel like you are good enough to be on camera and to share your information about your coaching packages. Yeah, for sure. All right. So where do you want to go from here? So I feel like you've gotten that one. What's the next one? I wanted to talk to you brief. Well, there was two points. There was one about how do you get comfortable with discomfort? But I think we've just pretty much covered that with the whole Facebook thing and get yourself in a really good place before you like springboard off. The other one was about external validation. So when you work for somebody else, you get external validation when you do a good job. How do you validate yourself to know you've done a good job? So again, see, this question also pertains to you not feeling good enough. Yeah. So it's a practice. It's a daily habit. So for example, one of the things that James and I do amongst and a few other questions that we answer is we share what we love about ourselves or what we're proud of from the day. So I would love for you to have a daily practice where again, it only takes a few minutes, but you're writing down. Okay. Awesome. So I sent that email today or I volunteered for this coaching session with Emily, or I got on Facebook live, or I had a conversation with Tracy in our group and we masterminded together, like Mm -hmm. all the things that you're proud of so that you remind yourself how amazing you are and the incredible things that you're doing. So it's also, it's also like reaffirming your message that you can do difficult things. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And for you, if it's all about external validation, that's a slippery slope because, because we're always looking for it. And the moment it's not there, then we don't feel good enough. It's like, we're looking to tap into something else. We have to learn how to tap into ourselves. Okay. And it's also a slippery slope because if you're looking for external validation, then that means the moment someone says something negative about you, it's going to take you down. So your job is like, yeah, learning how to like stand on your own two feet, regardless of people saying good things or bad things, because the truth is any compliment or any negative thought is actually about the person and the person saying it. So think about it. Like when you're saying something, it's like holding up a mirror and people are reflecting back how they feel about themselves based on what you're doing. Yeah. So I want you to like, it's great. Obviously people give you compliments, but you don't need it. Yeah. You're already a hundred percent for yourself. It just takes you to the next level. Um, but it doesn't bring you down. Right. So what else do you feel? Cause it's different for everyone would help you develop more confidence, more self-love that you could practice on a regular basis. Oh, um, that's a really difficult one. I honestly don't know. Um, 
I think I think the the confidence will come with just showing up and knowing that you are putting stuff out there that you're proud of and that's landing without looking for external validation I mean sort of like likes or comments then I guess it's just a feeling that you get internally that yeah I actually knocked that one out of the ballpark that really was a, a sort of successful session but about like self-love I I this is a bit of a sort of sticky area for me it's like it feels a bit self-indulgent if I'm perfectly honest okay so your career yeah requires self-indulgence you are not going to be successful and have the impact that you want to have unless you are self-indulgent from this point onward Okay. And what I, what I mean by that is if you don't get your confidence and self-worth up, you're not going to put yourself out there. So your yeah. life depends on you being self-indulgent. So I think I have a slightly different definition of self-indulgent then. So what to me you're saying is grow a pair of balls. That's what's going to push you forwards and you can do it. And this is all in your little noggin upstairs because you've got it and you know, you can do it. It's just, you've got to believe you can do it. Yes. And tell me what your definition of self-indulgent is. Unnecessary, uh, indulgences that I don't need, like and things that aren't required. They're, they're nice to have, and they're sort of over and above requirement level. Who's given you this requirements list? This is a conditioning I've got from years ago. Right. And I know where it comes from. It's this whole like grandparent, parent, make do and mend mentality. You know, almost like that wartime mantra of, oh, you don't need to spend that money. Watch the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. You know, you are blessed to have what you have. So just be grateful for what you've got. You shouldn't want more. It's greedy. It makes you avaricious. You know, these quotes can just keep coming, can't they? Um, yep. And how's that so, working out for you? Well, it's not going brilliantly, I'm really honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know enough about mindset work and, you know, that piece of the puzzle from what you've done in iHeart Coaching to understand that that is generational programming that's not serving you. Indeed. I mean, you even investing in the iHeart Coaching program, that was an indulgence. But I hope you would say that that helped move the ball forward and helped get the ball rolling, so to speak, with your business. You met amazing people. You started to transform, right? But by all accounts, based on your family and their thoughts, that was an indulgence that you didn't need to do, correct? Um, it was, but I, I decided to take that step for me because it felt really right. And in all honesty, I'd been shredding my student loan material the night before I signed up. And I thought, Jesus, you know, I spent all this money to get my degree and that's got me a 20 year career so far. If I want to have another career, then I need to invest and I need to get some mentorship and some guidance. And that was done sort of from me rather than from the conditioning from a conditioned place. Does that make sense? Yes. So that tells me that you are capable of making decisions, even though you have that conditioning, right? Yeah. The conditioning is not running your life. So you get to make a choice moment to moment. If you're going to choose the next version of yourself and what you mm -hmm. actually want, or are you going to adhere to the family programming? So well, every single day you have a choice to make. And yep. when we say self-indulgence, like I remember hearing um, Oprah talk about this, you know, women don't want to be boastful. We don't want to, you know, seem like we're being selfish, but she actually gave herself a challenge to be boastful, to show people how much she loves herself because for so long she was downplaying it and she didn't love herself. She wasn't okay. even downplaying it. She just didn't love herself. So she had to get herself to the other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So your job is to have some fun with this because the truth is, if you were your ideal client, your clients are struggling with this as well. They mm -hmm. have worthiness issues. They don't know how to show love to themselves. They're worried about being too self-indulgent and what it means for them. So yeah. your job is to figure this out for yourself first, and then you can teach it to your clients. Got it. 
So I want you like you, there's a way to be grateful, but still desire more and to put yourself first. There's a way to take care of your son, but to still put yourself first. There's a way to want to have a thriving coaching business, right? And to want to make a lot of money and still be grateful for the present moment. Like you're allowed to have both. So what would it look like for you on a regular basis to demonstrate love to yourself? I think almost ring fencing some time for me. You know, I'm a single mom I, and I work full time and I'm doing my iHeart coaching in my part time. And my nine to five is not a nine to five. It's more of a like an eight till nine, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I never stop. So for me, like time is such a luxury. That would be my treat, I guess. Okay. So what would it look like? How would you make that happen? Would, would you carve out a few hours? Tell me the specifics. Um, I think I would become far more, um, have far tighter boundaries around time given over to things. So, and this comes down to like time management, scheduling my time, I guess, and being less reactive and more proactive about planning out my day, what I'm doing when, um, and getting that more constructed because then I would almost like ring fence time for me and I would have boundaries around, you know, certain jobs, be that paid jobs, be that building my business bits and bobs and be, have, have less porous boundaries and be more strict with myself. Okay, great. And so let's look at this as more loving to yourself. So it's loving for you to create boundaries. It's loving for you to have a schedule so that you know what's happening. It's loving for you to map out these Facebook lives or your emails so that you know and feel confident in your message. So that's truly your work right now is that piece around loving yourself. Okay. Well, I've got the next two days booked off work. So this is what the next two days will be dedicated to. Great. And I really want to encourage you to have fun with this and just test out different things. So like, for example, I love to test out different morning routines to see what feels good to me. Yeah. And then you'll be able to have so much information for your clients as well. Like for example, Louise Hay always talks about the mirror exercise where you speak kindness to yourself in the mirror and you receive that right? You could test out things like that. Like be really excited about, okay, well, what's going to work for me? What's going to really fill up my cup so that I can go and serve other people. Okay. So almost get into a place of positive mindset and gratitude before you start your day. And you start your day on this sort of like high with the possibility and what you're going to, so I was listening to Brendan Bouchard's high performance habits audio book and I've bought his yeah. planner actually, which is amazing. So I guess it's about, right. What's my intention for the day? Who needs me on my A game today? How am I going to show up in that guys and get myself almost like psyched about the opportunities for the day? Yeah, I love it. Can you envision how different that would feel and how it would permeate into everything if you started your day in that way? Yeah, it'd be incredible, wouldn't it? I mean, you would be incapable of having a bad day. Nobody would be able to knock you off because you'd be like, no, I've got my intention set. You know, I was up at six, I've worked out, I've ticked that off my to-do list. I've journaled for half an hour and got myself in a really great place. And I'm so psyched about achieving X, Y, and Z today. Do you know what? If someone comes along and sends you a bit of a grumpy message, well, that's the for them to deal with. That's their stuff. That's not me. Exactly. Because you filled your cup. Yeah, exactly. I'm pushing it back on them. Your problem, you deal with it. I'm here in my happy little bubble. Exactly, Jenny. Exactly. (laughs) Amazing. Yeah. So you're already doing it. Now it's putting those pieces in place. And so I would look at, you know, you have the next two days off, like you said. So look at what do you want to do to carve out 30 minutes in the morning or however long it takes to start your day off in that way and really safeguard that for yourself. Cause I know that you're busy. I know you have the, the, your child, like how can you safeguard that? Is it getting up an additional 30 minutes early? Like really play the whole tape through and figure out what you require in order to be successful and start to practice self-love. 
Okay. It's not an option. It's a requirement for your success. Okay. Requirement for my success. Got it. Awesome. And don't be led by this conditioning of, you know, self-sacrifice and go without. And, Cause that's not no, going to harm because- anybody, I mean, you even know from a, you know, a logical or physiological standpoint, James would tell you, if you're not giving to yourself, you're not going to be able to help anyone. You're not going to be able to have energy in your career, in the business. It's not going to work. And so it's a requirement for you to give to yourself first. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Okay. So everything comes down to self-love and I'm so excited to see the transformation and to see you serving more people and showing up, but ultimately serving yourself. Oh, thank you, darling. That's very kind of you. I shall, uh, you will, you will watch with bated breath, no doubt, as I, um, as I bloom before you. (laughs) You already have bloomed so much. It's just that next level. Okay. So we believe in you a million percent. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the I Heart My Life show. Now do us a favor and tell people about this episode. It's truly our duty to make sure that the I Heart My Life movement is spread far and wide. The truth is life can be challenging, but it is possible for all women to love themselves and their lives. And while you're at it, send a link to this episode to three of your friends today, or maybe even post it on social media. Use the hashtag I Heart My Life show. That's hashtag I hurt my life show. And if you'd like to help me personally, then please rate and review this podcast on Apple podcasts. Give us some stars, cheer us on and leave a review because believe it or not, that stuff actually really does help. And I read all of them. Please remember everything you desire is meant for you and possible. Keep showing up, taking action and believing in your dreams.